Tonight, India drowning. Dozens drown in Hindu festival where recent rains had raised water levels. Rising crisis. For mine of ravages Sudan as thousands desperately seek essentials, the affected are yet to receive vital food. Furious weather. Helene makes landfall in Florida's as Category 4 hurricane as thousands evacuated. And AI breakthrough. Human-inspired robots are making a breakthrough in next-generation AI. All that and more as World News Tonight starts right now. This is Ada Derna World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here's Aquil Qureshi. Welcome down to World News Tonight and we've got key updates to bring to you from around the world. Let's begin in our neighbouring country in India. At least 46 people, including 37 children and 7 women, drowned while celebrating a Hindu religious festival in eastern India, local officials said. The fatalities were confirmed across 15 districts in the past 24 hours. A disaster management official said the victims died while ritually bathing in rivers and ponds affected by the recent flooding. In eastern India, at least 46 people, including 37 children and 7 women, have drawn during celebrations for the Hindu religious festival, Jivya Putirika. According to officials in the state of Bihar on Wednesday, fatalities have been confirmed across 15 districts and the overall death toll could rise further. Mothers carry out rituals during the three-day annual religious ceremony for the prosperity and long life of their children, marked by a fasting and taking holy dips in rivers or streams. The officials said many people had ignored dangerous water levels in swollen rivers. And in fact, last year, 22 people, including 15 children, died during the same festival. Former Defense Ministry Shigeru Ishiba is set to become Japan's Prime Minister after winning a closely fought contest in his fifth and what he called her final attempt to lead the ruling Liberal Democratic Party. Ishiba prevailed over hardline nationalist Shahini Takachi in a runoff vote. The leader of the LDP, which has ruled Japan for almost all of the post war era, is essentially assured of becoming the next premier because of its majority in parliament. A special session of parliament is scheduled for Tuesday to vote Ishiba into office. Speaking emotionally, Ishiba said that they must believe in the people speak the truth with courage and sincerity, and work together to make Japan a safe and secure country where everyone can live with a smile once again. The scramble to replace Premier Fumio Kishida was sparked in August when he announced he would step down over a series of scandals that plunged the LDP's rating to record lows. Ishiba, a self-proclaimed lone wolf whose contrarian views and spats with colleagues contributed to four previous failed leadership bids, has long been popular with the general public. But he said this was his final battle. Pope Francis landed in Belgium yesterday night to continue on his European trip after a day-long visit in Luxembourg. The 87-year-old pontiff was welcomed by Belgium King Philippe, Queen Matilda and Prime Minister Alexander de Croix at a Melsberg Air Base. A welcome ceremony featured children performing for the Pope on the tarmac. It is a rare European visit for Pope Francis. He has tended to go to places never visited by a pope or where Catholics are a small minority. In Belgium, he will hold a private meeting with 15 survivors of abuse, the country's ambassador to the Vatican, Patrick Reynolds said. More than 700 complaints and reports of abuse involving the church have been made in Belgium since 2012, according to the church report from the priesthood of former Belgian bishop who admitted to sexually abusing two nephews. More than half the people in Sudan are suffering from severe hunger. Hundreds are estimated to be dying from starvation and hunger-related diseases each day. But according to UN officials, life-saving international aid, cooking oil, salt, grain, lentils and more is enabled to reach millions of people who desperately need it. Sudan's humanitarian catastrophe has been the largest in the world for many months. More than half of Sudan's 45 million people need urgent relief aid. More than 12 million people are displaced, including nearly 2 million refugees in neighboring countries in Chad, Egypt and South Sudan. 
Some food security specialists fear that as many 2.5 million people could die from hunger by the end of this year. Last month, the world's leading hunger monitor reported that the war in Sudan and restrictions on aid delivery has caused famine in at least one location in the state of North Darfur and other areas of the country were potentially experiencing famine. New York City Mayor Eric Adams has been indicted on five federal charges related to bribery, wire fraud, conspiracy and solicitation campaign contribution from foreign nationals. The indictment alleged illegal actions stretching back to 2014 from when he was in Brooklyn Borough president. The conduct alleged in the indictment, the foreign money, the corporate money, the bribery, the years of concealment is a grave breach of the public's trust. Federal prosecutors charged New York City Mayor Eric Adams with bribery, wire fraud, conspiracy, and accepting illegal campaign contributions on Thursday. Manhattan's top federal prosecutor, Damian Williams, detailed a years-long scheme alleging Adams received improper valuable benefits from Turkish nationals in exchange for pressuring city officials to allow Turkey's new consulate to open, despite safety concerns. The mayor sought and accepted well over $100,000 in luxury travel benefits from some of the same foreign actors who arranged many of the illegal campaign contributions. Adams said he would not step down at a news conference outside Gracie Mansion, the official residence of the mayor, which federal agents searched just hours earlier. Adams said he would fight the charges in court and denied any wrongdoing. Adams is New York City's first mayor to be criminally charged while in office. Prosecutors said he disguised campaign contributions from Turkish sources by funneling it through U.S. citizens. Those funds allowed Adams to qualify for an additional $10 million in public financing. Turkey's foreign ministry had no immediate comment. Let's go into a short commercial break. More world news on the other side. On the road to the White House now, former President Donald Trump is scheduled to meet Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky as tensions rise between the two men over how the future defense of Ukraine against Russia invasions will be in conduction of Trump's win once he wins the U.S. election. For more details on the story, we have other than a correspondent, Ranusha Dharmiratna from Ontario, Canada. Over to you, Ranusha. Yes, I do. Donald Trump has confirmed he will meet Ukrainian President Zelensky in New York on Friday at Trump Tower despite earlier reports of a cancellation. Zelensky's U.S. visit has drawn criticism from Republicans, especially after he toured an arms factory in Pennsylvania, a key swing state which some viewed as politically motivated. On Thursday, Zelensky met with President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris at the White House to discuss Ukraine's victory plan aimed at pressuring Russia into diplomatic talks. Biden announced an additional $7.9 billion in military aid for Ukraine. Trump, however, expressed his confidence in quickly brokering peace between Zelensky and Russian President Vladimir Putin but refused to offer any specifics. When asked if Ukraine should cede land to Russia, Trump avoided a direct answer, saying, let's get some peace. The meeting comes amid political tension as some Republicans have accused Zelensky of engaging in supporting activities ahead of the US election. Well, that's it from here. Back to you, Akil. Thank you for that. That was other than a world correspondent, Ranusha Dharmarotna from Ontario, Canada. <music> Fast moving Hurricane Heli made landfall in the Big Bend area of Florida's northwestern coast as a category uh, four storm yesterday evening. A catastrophic storm surged as well as damaging winds, rains and flash floods hundreds of miles inland across much of the southeastern U.S. expected. 
Hurricane Helene is nearing landfall and its effects on the Gulf Coast have been evident. Check out this new video from Tampa. The high winds and storm surge calls the Florida Highway Patrol to close this bridge that goes across the bay. And flooding is already an issue in many areas. Now this video comes from Madeira Beach just outside Tampa and you can see that flooded lobby at a vacation resort there. As fighting between Israel and Hezbollah continue, Israeli's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu rejected a U.S.-backed proposal for three-week ceasefire. However, Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin said a war could be devastating for both Israel and Lebanon. Tonight, videos online showing massive airstrikes in Lebanon amid a rather public dispute between the White House and Israel. The Biden administration and others floating the idea of a 21-day ceasefire but within hours, Israel calling it the opposite of the truth. And in New York tonight, Israel's prime minister doubling down. Netanyahu saying, we continue to hit Hezbollah with all our might. We will not stop until we achieve our goals. But here in Lebanon, it continues unabated, softening the ground for a potential land incursion. And while the world focuses on Lebanon, more strikes, death and suffering in Gaza and the West Bank. In a rousing speech at the UN today, Palestinian President Abbas with a strong message for Israel. We will not leave. We will not leave. We will not leave. Nearly 700 people have been killed in Lebanon this week, according to Lebanon's health ministry. Israel has dramatically escalated strikes, saying it is targeting Hezbollah's military capacities and senior Hezbollah's commanders. Meanwhile, Hezbollah's firing of rockets and missiles into Israel has uprooted thousands across the border. Zainab savors a moment of rest after hours on the road to escape the strikes in the south of the country. Zainab's husband stayed behind and will try to join them later. Night has fallen on Beirut. Zainab has finally found a place to stay in the working class district of Kamal Zaytun in a flat where several families from her region have already set up camp. Zainab and the others are glued to the news, waiting for a lull in the fighting and an opportunity to return to their homes. Nearly 700 people have been killed in Lebanon this week, according to Lebanon's health ministry. Israel has dramatically escalated strikes, saying it is targeting Hezbollah's military capacities and senior Hezbollah's commanders. Meanwhile, Hezbollah's firing of rockets and missiles into Israel has uprooted thousands across the border. For five hours, Kiev was under fire. Sirens bled and drones exploded in the night as Russia targeted key infrastructure in the capital, damaging cars and buildings in the process. As this woman swept up the debris on her doorstep, she was thankful to be unharmed. According to the United Nations, Russia's attacks on Ukraine's energy network have knocked out some 70% of its capacity, prompting fears of a cold, troublesome winter for Ukrainians. And it is a tactic Russia appears to be doubling down on. In this city in Ukraine's west, backup generators were required on Thursday morning after attacks on the region's power grid left whole streets without electricity. And in the southern town of Zaporizhia, where a nuclear power plant is based, several people were injured when their homes were reduced to rubble. Ukraine's air force said it shot down four out of six missiles and 66 out of 78 drones launched by Russia overnight. But their defence systems were still not enough to prevent the damage. Ukraine's air defense battled an overnight Russian aerial attack on the capital, Kyiv, for five hours. The Ukrainian emergency service said that the attack injured at least two people and hammered the Ukrainian power grid. As Ukraine continues to push ahead with its offensive into Russian territory while also defending its own, the U.S., its biggest supporter financially, has agreed to send more assistance. Ahead of his meeting with Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky at the White House on Thursday local time, U.S. President Joe Biden announced that nearly $8 billion U.S. billion in military aid. This means $2.4 billion in security assistance through the Ukraine Security Assistance Initiative and $5.5 billion through the Presidential Drawdown Authority. Through the PDA, the U.S. can deliver surplus weapons held by the U.S. to Ukraine without congressional approval. 
The latest assistance announced by Biden will provide Ukraine with much-needed air defenses, unmanned aerial systems, and air-to-ground munitions while strengthening Ukraine's defense industry base. The military assistance will also include a shipment of precision-guided glide weapons with a range of up to 130 kilometers. The medium-range missile will provide a major upgrade in Ukraine's fight against Russia. In response, President Zelensky thanked his U.S. counterpart for the continued support. However, despite the latest assistance, a U.S. official stressed that Biden will not allow Ukraine to use U.S. missiles to hit targets deeper inside Russia. The Biden administration announced a massive infusion of military aid from Ukraine that will total nearly $8 billion and include bombs with a range of reach inside Russia. The announcement comes as Ukraine's president visits the White House to press for use of firing long-range weapons to Russia. Researchers are using the human body as inspiration for the next generation of robots. This contraption is said to run on artificial muscles, just like a person. It's like anatomy, but electronically charged. These Swiss scientists are using oil-filled plastic bags with electrodes on the side. Electric charges make the electrodes attract together like a magnet, which shortens the bag and pushes the oil to one side. Electrohydraulic muscles are more energy efficient than motor-driven robots. Experts also say this type of robot is able to move without complex sensors. This naturally leads to new inventions in terms of anthropomorphic hands that can be uh, operated in dangerous tasks. Why would a robot like this be useful? Researchers believe as the technology advances, these muscle-like movements will make robots better equipped to help in emergency rescue situations where it's dangerous to send human help. A second short commercial break, more world news on the other side. Welcome back. And finally tonight, a group of Swiss researchers has invented a series of next generation of robots using the human body as an inspiration. They believe these human-like robots could be utilized in situations where it is too remote or too dangerous to be aided by humans. Researchers are using the human body as inspiration for the next generation of robots. This contraption is said to run on artificial muscles, just like a person. It's like anatomy, but electronically charged. These Swiss scientists are using oil-filled plastic bags with electrodes on the side. Electric charges make the electrodes attract together like a magnet, which shortens the bag and pushes the oil to one side. Electrohydraulic muscles are more energy efficient than motor-driven robots. Experts also say this type of robot is able to move without complex sensors. This naturally leads to new inventions in terms of anthropomorphic hands that can be uh, operated in dangerous tasks. Why would a robot like this be useful? Researchers believe as the technology advances, these muscle-like movements will make robots better equipped to help in emergency rescue situations where it's dangerous to send human help. British actress Maggie Smith, an award-winning Shakespearean actress and double Oscar winner who later appeared in the Harry Potter films, has died aged 89. One of the few actors to win the treble of an Oscar, Emmy and Tony, Smith's long career started on the stage in the 1950s. A statement from her sons Toby Stevens and Chris Larkin said, It is with great sadness we have to announce the death of Dame Maggie Smith. For many younger fans in the 21st century, she was best known as Professor McGonagall in all seven Harry Potter movies and the Dowager Countess in the hit TV series and movie spin-offs of Downton Abbey, a role that seemed tailor-made for an actress known for purse-lipped asides and malicious cracks. Tributes were also paid by her co-stars. Hugh Bonneville, who appeared in Downton Abbey, said, Anyone who ever shared a scene with Maggie will attest to her sharp eye, sharp wit and formidable talent. Her first Academy Award nomination was for her turn playing Desdemona opposite Laurence Olivier's Othello in 1965. 
Before winning the Oscar for her role as an Edinburgh schoolmistress in 1969's The Prime of Miss John Brodie, she won her second Oscar for her supporting role in the 1978 comedy California Suite, a performance that prompted co-star Michael Caine to say Maggie didn't just steal the film, she committed grand larceny. In 1990, Smith was knighted by Queen Elizabeth and became a dame. Prime Minister Keir Starmer, reacting to her passing, said Dame Maggie was beloved by so many for her great talent, becoming a true national treasure whose work will be cherished for generations to come. Thank you very much for joining us on World News Tonight. We'll be back with the latest of updates from around the world on Monday. But until then, stay tuned as we've got Anuradha Rikram Singh joining you next on Nightly Business Report. Well, I'm Akbar Qureshi. Thank you for watching. Good night.